when you want the transport capability of an MTT, but you don't need to have enough armor to knock down a building. Look no further than the platoon attack craft. What's up, Meta Nerds? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Trade Federation's Platoon Attack Craft, otherwise known as the PAC. We'll be using both Legends and Canon sources to deliver you a complete picture of the PAC's stats, capabilities, and role in the Trade Federation's forces from the Battle of Naboo to beyond. The Platoon Attack Craft played an essential role in Trade Federation and later CIS forces, transporting massive quantities of battle droids as a part of a larger combined arms operation. The vehicle, 26 meters in length, was essentially a repulsor lift sled adapted from civilian use similar to how the Trade Federation adapted the STAP from a civilian airhook. Here we can see the continued trend of the Trade Federation in this early period when they tried to present themselves as a purely commercial enterprise, concealing their considerable warfighting abilities and the development of their combat vehicles. The sled was piloted by a pair of OOM pilot droids, likely replaced during the Clone Wars with independently thinking models. The PAC carried a rack stowing 112 battle droids armed with standard blaster rifles, identical to the rack carried on board its larger brother, the multi-troop transport. The PAC, with its open design, is unarmored and did not have any weaponry, making the troops it carried very vulnerable even to small arms. Thus, the PAC's primary role was shuttling droids around in occupied areas or far behind the battle lines, ideally away from enemy fire. During the occupation of Naboo, they can commonly be seen fulfilling this purpose. Later, we would see them break this rule, with the PACs being used in the direct assault on Republic positions and the amphibious assault on Kachiro Beach, possibly only because the heavy MTTs could not hover across the lake. When the Trade Federation became a part of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, they took their arsenal with them, including their stockpile of PACs. Platoon attack craft were used to shuttle droids from the factories and holding areas to the Petronaki Arena on Geonosis, during what would become the first Battle of the Clone Wars, and they were later seen on Hisrich in the aforementioned Kashyyyk. Unlike most donated vehicles, they were not repainted in CIS colors, instead appearing in their standard Trade Federation livery. So without armor and weapons, why would the Trade Federation and CIS use the PAC over the much more capable MTT Big Brother? Well, firstly, and never to be underestimated in importance to Nymoidians, is cost. This is outrageous! I object! The PAC cost a mere 37,000 credits, versus the MTT's 120,000, so it's more than three times cheaper. Additionally, the use of less materials freed up additional supplies and factory space, meaning you could pump out these and other craft faster. Secondly, the PAC was a faster vehicle, nearly twice the speed, moving without any of the heavy armor of the MTT at a rate of 50 km per hour at maximum thrust. In a transport role, the PAC was superior to the MTT, moving troops to their destination faster and with equal transport capacity, as long as they did not encounter enemy resistance. The Trade Federation clearly saw them as integral to their combat operations, with their C9979 transports carrying 28 of these vehicles, compared to just 11 MTTs and with Lucre Hulks transporting 1,500 PACs compared to 550 MTTs, almost triple the amount. So with all those advantages, why are they so rarely seen in the Clone Wars? The most important reason of all is their vulnerability. They can't be used in the battle lines like the MTT, like we see on Dathomir during Grievous' invasion. Even on nominally secured planets, their cargo of droids is extremely vulnerable to even attacks from blasters and grenades. Thus, on worlds with significant partisan activity, such as Ryloth and Onderon, it was safer to move droids and cargo within protected MTTs, with thick armor that was virtually impossible for lightly armed rebels to breach. Unless, of course, they got help from the CIA, <coughs> I mean Jedi. I love this! However, it can be assumed that on secure Separatist worlds, it would have been a common sight to see PACs shuttling around cargo and droids going in between factories and garrisons. That's just the side of the Clone Wars we don't see too often. And then because the droid army was decommissioned after the Clone Wars, these all would have been rapidly decommissioned vehicles, and it was simple to reconvert them, just take the rack off, and now they're standard civilian cargo sleds. And this would have been a really useful vehicle for any world, being the same length as two and a half school buses, and although no stats exist on the width or height, we can estimate it to be around two meters tall, without the rack, using this B-1 pilot droid as a reference. This would make it as tall as a king-size bed and almost as wide as a Wookiee plus a Jawa. Although it looks the same, it is unknown whether the droids would deploy from the racks as with the MTT, with those racks spreading laterally in a sequential fashion, or if they deployed by some other method. And keep in mind that the MTT could swap out its rack to carry 20 B2 super battle droids, or 20 droidicas. It's unknown if the PAC had this capability, but I don't see why not. Which is terrifying to think about, a rapid response hover sled full of 20 droidicas. Sadly, there's not too much cool facts or behind-the-scenes material to discuss with this vehicle. 
Its first identification was oddly not in a vehicle, but rather a locations sourcebook, with its name emerging in the early drafts of The Phantom Menace. A LEGO set created for the PAC in 2015 carried a paltry 8 droids in comparison to what should be 112, a minifig collector's dream. Maybe an update to this forgotten vehicle will come out soon. If not, we'll all express to Dave Filoni our utmost disappointment. If you made it this far, please hit that like button. Comments, shares, it's all the best way to help me out. Subscribe to bring balance to the algorithm. But most important of all, remember, if your tactical droid commander assigns you to one of these, make sure you get this bottom bunk. It might give you some semblance of protection. And the Force will be with you. Always.